Hello, this is Michelle at Jasami Bookworm Podcast. And it's sad to say it's our last day at the festival, but we're delighted to say that we have Micah with us, the writer that we've been working with in a mentorship program for the past year and a half. And she and Andrew are visiting. We also have in the background our author, Simpson Monroe. It's a beautiful day in Edinburgh. And we are going to enjoy this. So I'm going to end it on the happiest note with speaking with Micah, whom I've enjoyed so much working with her over the last year and a half. Welcome, Micah. Hello. <laughs> so we'll go from there. <laughs> the uh, Micah, you've been writing for many, many years. And in this process, you followed a certain style, which we call telling. And you've had to rewrite the book, most impressively, into showing. Would you like to explain to uh, the audience just a little bit about uh, how the process was in the beginning and where it's led to? So let's start with how was the process in the beginning for changing it from tell to show? In, in, in a single word, daunting. It was terrifying to have to do it um, as we spoke we spoke about this in the past and effectively I've created my ba- what is my baby and suddenly I'm told that my baby with two heads and six arms is not quite how it should be so having to chop off a few arms and a head and then redress it to make it work better is yeah something that's quite daunting to do and initially it was very tough the first chapter I had to rewrite I had to figure out how to do it what to do it um, I had a lot of guidance from Michelle on this which was brilliant um, but you still have to figure it out for yourself as well and it took a while before before I really got that and however once I got it um, that's when things started happening and from the, bringing uh, from me telling the book as a narrator to actually having the book coming alive and effectively showing happening so now you've had to rewrite the entire book and I know you've written several novels before this and we'll say to everyone that Micah does um uh she has dyslexia so uh how does it this particular form of dyslexia affect you Micah I am restricted to certain uh, font styles, so uh, letter letter types, um, spacing in between the the sentences makes a difference, which I didn't realise until uh, Michelle actually suggested to me to um, go up to one and a half spacing in between sentences and to up the font by from 12 to 14. I never expected it, but it made an absolute difference because it actually made things a lot clearer. So, and, and that's the thing is that you don't always know. Something will will look easier to read and become clearer, but until you identify it. So, I know in the beginning when we were working through everything that you know there was that moment where it seemed to click. Can you tell us about that, please? It's. It came fairly quickly, I'd say. I worked, I struggled through chapter one, and then when I started chapter two, it suddenly started to become a bit more clear. And by chapter three, I actually grasped what it, what it was that it was needed. That was, uh, yeah, that was required to make the change. Mm-hmm. And it's very strange because it's not a cl- moment that actually clicks. It just suddenly, from one moment to another, it's there, but you're not even aware of it. So it just happens. And that's the thing about writing in the process. We'll have a process that we'll work with for such a long time. And then it's a challenge to be asked to change the process and the way we've worked. And you had written so many, you know, pieces before that. So that that actually was was one of the challenges going forward. What made it pleasurable between the change, you know? So you went from from telling to showing. What have you enjoyed most about that change in the process? It's 
it was an absolute joy to relive the story and to retell the story um, and relive the characters. Um, it, it, from what started out as a chore, um, very, very quickly it became uh, a pleasure and it ended up being an addiction, just like writing itself is. So, it's, uh, but yeah, re, retelling the story, redoing the story um, and bringing it back alive, bringing it up, you know, more alive than it was before. Um, yeah, it was a real joy. So you have several pieces going forward. What have you noticed about the other works that you're writing? How has that changed your, your writing as you do it now? While I was doing the rewriting of the current book, uh, of the book that I've just rewritten, um, I was finishing my fourth book. Um, and because I had the story in my head, I wanted to just get that out. And I've noticed that the last couple of chapters, um, without even thinking about it, I started changing it uh, or writing it in the new style. Uh, so that book will have to be rewritten. <laughs> in fact, all, all the others need to be rewritten. <laughs> in other words, I'm causing a lot of work. No, you're not. I'm actually looking forward to it now. And, and I think that's the most important part is that you have such a positive attitude about writing and the joy that I think that it does bring to you. When you are writing and you're in the zone, how do you feel? Consumed. <laughs> in a good way. So the other question I have is, uh, I think the most challenging part was coming to that moment. What was your most joyful part about the writing over the last year? starting to realize what it was we were looking for and f realizing that yes I can do this and yeah from that moment it just starts rolling and it really became a joy to do it so it's, uh... Andrew I know that you've read Micah's work throughout the years uh, and you've been with her through this entire process I have indeed, yep. what is the the biggest change uh, that you've seen in the work you're reading? I think really the biggest change has been, um, it, certainly in this latest novel that's been rewritten, and uh, it's been a, a move from just uh, telling to actually showing um, the story and showing the characters, and putting it in, in, in the present, in the real time. Uh, and I think that's brought the whole story more alive, it's made it more enjoyable, uh, more readable and it certainly made you know led to me turning for the next page and the next chapter and um, it's certainly been enjoyable um, to see that and I know that Micah now wants to um, go forward with that and she also wants to look at the other books that she has written and start with them and, and rewrite those and, and uh, I think those will be enjoyable to to read as well it'll be interesting to see how because having read those other books, it'll be interesting to see how those now turn out and, and uh, how much they uh, flow in, in, a, in a, a, a lot of a, better, a bit, much better way. So I'm looking forward to doing that, certainly. I'm going to put you on the spot now. So <laughs> uh, has there a particular character that you've really noticed a difference in that you've been more drawn into in the story as you read it now? I think um, certainly the characters of, of uh, Lily and, and Vicky, definitely, and also the, the characters of, of uh, the character of James, and, and also the the, uh, the the ones around them, the, the various people who, who mean something in their lives as well. But certainly with, with Vicky and with with Lily, I certainly feel more drawn to them, and it kind of makes me wonder, you know, from from. And this is what I think is absolutely marvellous, how Mike has got these characters. And I start to try and imagine, well, what would they look like? What would they sound like? Who would they be, you know? And, then, you know, even, and even in some way, if we were to cast them, who would we choose to play these parts, you know? Um, and that get, gets me thinking in that way as well. Um, so they, they've come alive, really, from... Not only, yeah, certainly from the initial, I, I did, you know, wonder what, what would they sound like, what would they look like, but more so now. I think with this rewriting, um, there's certainly, you know, more depth to them. That I think one of the things I've enjoyed most is the relationship between them. You know, the relationship of, of the sisters, the relationship 
you know, with James and the, and the depth at, that you've brought to that world, as well as the world of, you know, World War II and what's going on, the realism of what they're living with. And I'm going to tease you with that because this is really a phenomenal part to the story, which I've enjoyed immensely. So, Andrew, uh, now I know you're getting near the end and you haven't finished it, uh, but it's been a page turner. What are you looking forward to in the future? Um, I'm looking forward to, um, obviously, I'm a few pages from finishing it, um, but I'm looking forward to seeing um, the other stories rewritten and what they're going to look like and, and going from there and where this takes you know, Micah, where this takes both of us, really, um, because it's it's been an incredible journey. It's, it's a lot of hard work and a lot of passion that's gone into that. And uh, joking, joking apart, I mean, certainly um, Micah, you know, will go and do her writing and then she'll say she'll be gone for hours. And I let her get on with it and do it. And she'll say, oh, I'm so sorry, I've, I've left you on your own for hours. I said, don't worry, it's fine. I've watched some TV, read a book, you know, done the gardening, whatever you need to do what's important to you and what you're enjoying, you know? And, and that's really what's been important there. And I know Micah gets great, uh, great enjoyment from what she's doing. And I certainly, from this latest novel, you were, you were talking just now about the people's experiences. I think certainly it's the characters that have come through, but it's also the experiences that they live through and the things that happen to them. So if they were caught in a bombardment or if the pilots went up in the sky, the realism that's sort of brought to you, what these people sacrificed, what they went through, how they, how they lived, you know, on, on edge sometimes, and how this interfered, the war, how this interfered with their lives, you know, and how they got through it, really, how they endured. So um, that's really what's, what's come through in, in this novel, the, the immense amount of detail that's gone into it, as well as the, the drawing of all of the characters, and the explaining of a story and the, the wonderful story uh, that it is. The other characters that are in it um, that bring such depth, you know, the relationship she has with her brother and the what he goes through that we're not going to talk about because I definitely want you to read the story. However, I think those relationships are much more compelling now and that you've brought a richness to those relationships because I know when I was reading about when he has to go off and you know he's got this journey this mission in his mind that's compelling him and the way it's written now I feel it I'm I'm I wouldn't say dragged because I'm just running with it and those characters make it such a wonderful story and I have to say with with what you do, you know, how you started with it in the telling part is amazing how you've changed the story, which I'm looking forward to. And I have to admit, I haven't finished reading it yet, but I'm looking forward to next week and I don't have to do anything. Duvet day, book, and that's it. We're going to do it. So uh, we're going to finish off with a, a couple of questions uh, with Micah. Thank you, Andrew, for sharing. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Michelle. So, Micah, you've, you've finished, I would say you've finished the initial part, taking the story from uh, tell to show. You've, the show is compelling. The characters are so rich. The story is so rich. There are certain chapters when I feel that I've actually been a part of what's, what's occurred in that particular chapter. So... Uh, you're tinkering with the end. I know. I think we're looking at a little bit. Yes. The, the end, the last chapter has gone through a lot of change. Um, the story is the, story's the same, but um, the, story, the, the final chapter literally was, oh, this has happened, this has happened, this has happened. And I've had to change that to this is, you know, what's actually happening and be part of it. So... It's, uh, <laughs> Now, I know you're not supposed to have a favorite child, and someone said, no, we don't have favorite characters, so putting you on the spot. Do you have a favorite or top two, maybe? I love the character of the brother, Thomas. I will admit, he 
He absolutely sounds phenomenal. And I think part of it is, is because of what he goes through internally that you portray so well that he is so strong, but there is so much going on underneath that character that is portrayed so well. Uh, so this is your second year at the book festival. Thank you so much. You live down south and you come and visit. So thank you for doing that. You both do. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, so coming up and seeing the festival, it's much, much nicer weather this year. And hopefully in the not too distant future, you'll be in that book signing tent. That's the intention <laughs> anyway. Uh, what is it about coming here that you do in enjoy Micah? General atmosphere is great. Um, it's, it's quite a special place this. So, it's, uh, and also, I used to live in Scotland and it's fabulous to be back. <laughs> it's, uh, it's always nice to have a home and a home and a home. So I'll put you on the spot, Micah and then Andrew, regarding a shout out. So who would you like to do your shout out to for this? Um, love to say hello to all my family and all my colleagues at the um, funeral company I actually work for in my day job. You're allowed to give an advertisement for them. I think it, uh, it wouldn't be an advertisement. You can say the name if they're happy with it or no. I'm sure they will be. It's Lotch Brothers, which is in London. And so we will say the next uh, shout out. We'll put An- Andrew on the spot. Who would you like to do that? Well, the, the shout out really again to, to everyone who's supportive of Micah's work, to, to her family and friends, and um, also to Micah, I suppose, really, for putting this whole you know, story together and for the creation of such rich and, and wonderful characters and for being persistent in just you know, writing it and then rewriting it and, and making sure it all comes together and, and doing it with, with such sort of uh, joy and happiness. Uh, and, and I know that she's looking forward to, to you know, uh, moving forward with this in a very positive way and, and being able to introduce that book to a much wider readership. And I look forward to it because I know it will be a huge success. I feel that in my heart. Whenever I have one of my feelings, they always do come true. So thank you for taking the time at this moment. We're going to have an additional part as we're going to do a couple of more interviews here as we wind up at the Edinburgh International Book Festival. Sunny day, lots of background noise, and that's what we love. So we have two authors uh, talking about changes to characters, and this is too great. We can't not add it in. So we're just going to... We're going to listen to the conversation between the two of them. Okay, so I had a female character. Um, I created a name for her, and she came from Poland. And she is in... I, I can't remember if she's at the end of the appointment or the start of going home. But anyway, it doesn't matter. So the book then went for editing, right? And one of the editors... Editors are the bane of my life, Right? I've only had them for four years. Don't listen to that. Right, don't listen to that. But anyway, it just happens that one of the editors had a Polish girlfriend who then tells him that's not a Polish name, it's Russian. And my whole character has now gone from Poland to Russia. <laughs> I know what that feels like. Um, I, in the first book that I wrote, I have a family that's from Shanghai. I had the fortune of... Uh, through through my previous careers as a flight attendant working with crew from Hong Kong uh, and from mainland China and I asked them about the name have I got this surname right because you know these things are important well actually that surname is Hong Kong based it's not it's not it's not mainland you can't use that unless you put something in that they moved so I had to add that the family had moved two generations ago just to to make it believable (laughs) Um, there'll be no more Russian characters in any of my future books, to be honest with you. Thank God. <laughs> uh, I can't avoid foreign characters, so it's something I've grown, uh, grown wise of now. So, in the new one, which is currently getting written, right, there's a few Italian names, so I learned my lesson. Common Italian names, common Italian Christian names, common Italian surnames, female, male... And I'm sitting there juggling them all up. And see if anybody comes back and says, 
Nah, they don't. They don't really live there. I'm going to go. Really? No, we're not going to. We're editing this out, <laughs> just for the youthful audience kind of thing. But anyway, this lady has my utmost respect for everything she's done, Micah. Really, be nice with you. And this brings us to a perfect part of the conversation which we were discussing earlier about uh, Micah and the dyslexia. So you've written quite a number of books. I've written four books. What advice and suggestions would you give to those who have dyslexia about writing? Don't let it stop you. Don't let it stop you in your tracks at all. Um... It's not important whether you spell things right. There are people who can help you with that. Um, The first thing is get the story out there. Get it on paper. And, you know, you can always rewrite, as I've done. uh, There's editors who will help you. And use what tools are available. Nowadays, um, dyslexia is such a well-known thing. There are so many different versions, so your version will be unique to you, but there's people out there who can help you. Um, Whether whether you're in school, whether you're in a job, whether you're just wanting to work as a writer, you know, there's tools out there. There's specialists out there. Use them. They're there to help you. So Now you did this all by yourself. And I know that there's a story about how you first discovered the dyslexia because it wasn't diagnosed. So if I'm not putting you on the spot, would you relay that, please? Uh, Yes. I went through my school periods. I had to reset a year in primary school, reset a year in secondary school, reset a year in professional academy because I had dyslexia and I didn't know it. I was 21 when I found out, when I was diagnosed with dyslexia. And the only reason for it was because my mum and I were watching a TV show and one of the characters had been to school, filled his exam and started talking about it in the TV show. And it was like this guy was talking about me. And my mother and I was like, oh my God, what's going on here? And that's when he said, oh, by the way, yes, you've got dyslexia. From that on, uh, through a friend from school, I learned about this specialist in the Netherlands. I was going to school in the Netherlands. Made an appointment, and that's where it started, became inc- where it became clear that, so, yes, you do have that. He was surprised to actually finish school altogether. So... And see, you did, but that's, and that's the thing, it's determination, even in the face of those odds. You have to be stubborn, you have to be determined. Uh, but that goes for anyone, whether you've got dyslexia or not. If you want something in life, you know, the only person who's going to get it is you. So, uh, another comment on this. I can totally relate to this, right? I had a nephew, 14 years old, before he was diagnosed. And, or, right, I'm not going to use the word diagnosed. It's, when they found out he was dyslexic, he was 14 years old. And they didn't know how he had managed to get through primary school and into secondary school. Um, And that's when it then all came out. They had dyslexia. The the difficulty in some, uh, the challenges, you know, physical, you know, whether they're physical and mental or emotional, are often quite difficult to diagnose because... We just, when we're stubborn, we we push through it. And it said, and I think you were, and I hate this word, you were, uh, someone was said, lazy, which I couldn't. My parents were told I was lazy with some things. And my parents were absolutely disagreeing with it because they knew what I was like. I would come home, I would do my homework straight away. I would study for my test. And just because I failed a test um, didn't, wasn't because I didn't know what the, uh, what the material was. It was simply because very often I didn't understand what the question was. Um, the way it was written confused me. So, yeah, you, you, you're, up and, you're on an uphill battle initially, but this day and age there is so, many help, so much help out there and, you know, it's really important to get that because it can make all the difference. And I think the understanding that comes from today's 
day and age, you know, that there is more understanding and more help. And I think the one thing I admire most about you, Micah, is that you, you push through that. Your parents knew that, you know, you worked really hard and you were, you were and are creative. I've noticed that quite frequently, um, that there's the chefs, most chefs that I admire, a lot of them suffer from dyslexia. A lot of actors suffer from dyslexia. And I think, and I don't know, I'm just a lay person, but I've seemed to correlate the creativity is often there as an underlying attribute to the dyslexia, which is the difficulty in life. If you have a d- dyslexia, well, if you have anything that you know isn't the norm that doesn't function quite as it you have to find ways around it you have to either get through it or you have to get around it and you know you can't get you can't just give up and let it beat you down nobody's going to win so it's yeah so advice don't give in don't give up at all you know you you can do it you can do it it does help if you have a support network um, be that family, be that friends, be that colleagues. It's a huge, it makes a huge difference. I was very lucky to have my husband, who was such great support, and to have my family who helped, had my back. But in the end, it is still you who's doing it. So just do it. You know, don't worry about the spelling errors. <laughs> and I'm a horrible speller, and I don't suffer from dyslexia. Geographically challenged, yes, but and I still am a horrible oh, speller. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so Andrew, so Andrew, <laughs> with <laughs> edit it out, maybe. Actually, it's a conversation, so we won't go down that road. Andrew, we can do uh, that with. with <laughs> Uh, with the support that you've given to Micah and coming to understand it, uh, what has impressed you most about what Micah does with her writing and her creativity with with dyslexia? Just the way that she doesn't let dyslexia get in the way. It doesn't, doesn't hold her back. She knows she has it, but she's still willing to write and to, to learn and to develop. Um, some people I've met in life, they, they say, I've got this, or I've got that, or I've got dyslexia. And it's almost like, I can't do this because I've got this. Micah says, yeah, I've got this, but I'm not going to let it get in the way. I'm going to write, I'm going to develop, I'm going to create. I'm not going to let it hold me back. Um, yeah, maybe I'll need some support and help along the way, um, but I'm not going to let it hold me back. And I think that's really um, testament to Micah's determination uh, you know, with a lot of things, um, to keep going and, and to see things through to the end and, and to work hard at them, really. I think deciding that you won't be um, dictated to by the challenges in life, and that that's what we really need to ad- admire, you know, what I admire most about you and working with you over the last year and a half. And I say working with... Mike has done most of the work. I, I helped a little in the beginning, you know, and I read it. And then I just keep reading the pages and love the story. So I think uh, the support is wonderful. And that's what's mostly, that's what's really necessary, you know, because uh, driving through something is not always easy. But when you know there's support behind it, that's, that's really important. I will obviously uh, leave a link for support in the description of the podcast and at this point in time we're going to take a little break because there's been a little bit of hilarity going on (laughs) and we'll stop now and resume shortly for the next part. I had wanted to do a special recording with India and uh, saying goodbye to all the lovely people at the libation tent but there was a queue Not quite a mile long, but it was quite long. Anyway, we had a wonderful time at the Edinburgh International Book Festival all month long. Today's the final day, and to everyone that's there, I wish them a fabulous time. We look forward to next year's uh, festivities. And in the meantime, this is Michelle from Jasami Bookworm Podcast, wishing you all a sunny day.